Good Tuesday morning. I uh, want to just share some thoughts with you from Mark chapter 14. A great little passage uh, beginning in verse 3. Uh, the Bible says about Jesus and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. <laughs> Here's this great passage. Jesus is in Bethany. <clears throat> Probably uh, John chapter 12 is a parallel passage. Um, Martha has made the supper. Uh, he's probably uh, dining with Lazarus and and some other folks in Bethany and and uh, uh, Mary, uh, the sister of Lazarus, the sister of Martha, uh, I would suspect is the one doing the anointing. At least according to John twelve, I think they're the same event. Um, but but quite honestly, uh, there are a number of folks that uh, that should have been uh, doing this for Jesus. Uh, the woman taken in adultery in John chapter 8. Uh, she wasn't accused by Jesus. He told her to, to go and sin no more. She she should have been doing this for Jesus. Maybe it was the woman at the well uh, when Jesus was in Samaria in John chapter 4, uh, who was living an immoral life, who, uh, who found forgiveness through the Lord. Um, he told her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. Uh, she should have done it. Maybe the widow of Nain in Luke 17 when uh, when Jesus came upon, or in Luke 7, excuse me, when Jesus comes upon the funeral procession and and uh, raises her son, uh, her only son, back to life, uh, uh, she should have done that. And uh, at any rate, maybe it was the, uh, the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, 12 years she'd suffered with this, uh, with this disease. She spent all that she had on, on trying to be benefited, on trying to be healed and never could. And and, uh, and Jesus comes along as she touches the hem of his garment and the crowd and the press. He turns and said, who touched me? And ultimately he heals her. And and uh, she should have done that. Maybe it was Mary Magdalene who uh, who was possessed by seven demons in Luke chapter 8. Maybe uh, maybe it was, was a number of folks that should have done that. Uh, but it was uh, Mary, uh, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who, uh, who I believe was the one that uh, that poured this ointment upon the head of Jesus. And, and, and here's what she did. She did what she could for the Lord. Uh, what, what a great thought. What a great uh, uh, principle that, uh, that Jesus shared. She hath wrought a good work on me. She, uh, she hath done a good thing and, and, and quit troubling her. And, and the reality is uh, she gave Jesus her best. And, and, and really... Um, you and I, we ought to be giving the Lord our best. It, it's amazing we give Him part of our life, um, but but you know somehow we're uh, we're really leery about giving Jesus the very best that we can give unto Him, the best of our service, the best of our time, the best of our treasure, the best of our our talent. It's it's like we feel like we need to reserve things for ourselves. She gave she gave the very best she had. That was that was an incredible amount. To, of money, it was it was it was equivalent to a year's wages to purchase that kind of ointment, that perfume, that spikenard uh, that she anointed Jesus with, um, and and so uh, she certainly gave a, a tremendous amount. She gave the best that she had under the Lord, and and I want to share just a couple of quick principles, a couple of quick thoughts about about sharing our best with the Lord, uh, because uh, the reality is this: when when you share your best, when you give God your best. 
um, whether it's of your time, of your talent, of your treasure, it's just of yourself. When you give your best to the Lord, there are going to be some folks that just don't understand that. Um, it doesn't resonate with them. Uh, when you're pouring yourself out, when you're giving yourself unto the Lord, uh, there are going to be folks that just don't understand. The crowd reacted. There were some that had indignation in verse 4 within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? Uh, didn't think much of Jesus, did they? Uh, Judas, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. G Judas just wanted to put it in the bag because he was the uh, the treasure of what they kept. But uh, but there are, there are some that, that just don't understand when we sacrifice and we give unto the Lord. Uh, there, there are some that our sacrifices to the Lord, they, they appear to be a waste unto them. Pretty good gauge of the heart. If you're, if you're trying to, to do your best and give your best unto the Lord and other folks ridicule you or mock you or don't understand it or question it, think, why would you do that? Why, why do you got to do this? Why do you got to do that? Why are you always got to be here? Why are you always running there? Why, why are you involved in this? Why, 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 why the church? Why Christ? Why the... When folks have that kind of mentality and that kind of heart, they're on a different wavelength. Spiritually, they're on a different wavelength. They don't understand the dedication that a true follower of Christ has. And quite honestly, they're either not saved or they're certainly not where they need to be with the Lord. Uh, but, but at any rate, there, there are those that are just going to question. They don't understand uh, why, why you want to sacrifice and why you want to do and why you want to go the second mile and why you want to give your all unto the Lord. They, they don't understand why you invest in the lives of other people. That just doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't resonate with them because they don't have the kind of heart that's in love with Jesus that wants to give their all unto him. Here's a woman that, that was just so enamored, so in love with Jesus that she just wanted to give the best she had, and she happened to have this alabaster box of ointment uh, that was worth an awful lot of money in those days, uh, but she couldn't think of any better use of it uh, than to anoint Jesus uh, with that ointment. And so she did. Uh, to those around her, it seemed like foolishness, but to her it made perfect sense. Uh, by the way, Paul reminds us that the preaching of the cross is to them which perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And, and so the reality is this. There are some things just don't make sense to people who aren't where they need to be with the Lord, but they make absolute sense to those who are trying to follow Christ. And and just don't expect folks to understand you or, or approve of the sacrifices you make for the Lord. Uh, they're going to ridicule. They're going to mock because it doesn't make sense to them. I'll tell you another thing. Giving our best to the Lord, it, it pleases Jesus. He said in verse 6, She hath wrought a good work on me. He didn't mind standing up and, and speaking up for her. He said, listen, let her alone. What she did, she did a good thing. And in essence, he was almost saying unto her, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I remind you, Jesus does not just throw accolades around. They have to be, uh, they have to be earned. They have to be honest. He doesn't just make things up. And, and, and the reality is this. She, uh, she heard those words flow from the, from the divine lips of Jesus that uh, she hath wrought a good work on me. And, and the reality is this. When she gave her, her best unto the Lord, Others may not have understood. Others may have ridiculed and mocked. But Jesus knew exactly what she did. And it pleased him uh, when, when she had that level of dedication and that level of devotion. And, and honestly, who would you rather please? Wouldn't you rather please Jesus uh, than, uh, than, than other folks in this world? I'll tell you something else. When we give our best to the Lord, uh, Jesus defends us. He did that very thing in verse 6. They're all, they're all, yeah, 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 yeah. Why'd she do this? Why would she do that? And, 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 and some, some had indignation within themselves. That's funny to me. But at any rate, um, it wasn't, it wasn't their, wasn't their ointment. It wasn't theirs to even be indignant about, but they have indignation that she would do such a thing. Well, we see a lot of that in our culture. The folks that has nothing to do with them, they have indignation about stuff. But, but at any rate, Jesus, he, he defends her. He, he sticks up for her. Uh, he silences the critics. By the way, you and I have a critic every day that is constantly criticizing us. He's constantly attacking us. He's constantly demeaning us. And that's the adversary of the devil. And, and, and you know what? Uh, as the accuser of men, uh, he's constantly pointing out all of our faults and failures. And, 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 you know, he doesn't even have to deceive about that because we do have faults and failures. 
uh, the reality is, though, in Christ, our faults and failures, uh, they're covered. When we keep a clean slate with the Lord, uh, he keeps those things taken care of. And I'm grateful uh, that, that, that Jesus defends me before the Father. I'm grateful he's my advocate. Uh, when I have the prosecuting attorney uh, lashing out against me, I'm grateful that my defender is Jesus, and he speaks up for me and uh, silences the critics. He also silences the attacks of men. Uh, when others lash out, uh, out at us and, and uh, when, when, they try to, when they try to ridicule and mock us, uh, Jesus ultimately stands up for us. And, and, and honestly, there are going to be those who criticize you that, uh, that, that down the road, uh, as they see your, uh, your continued uh, dedication and commitment and devotion to Christ, it's going to impress upon them. Your, uh, your good works and, and your faithfulness to the Lord, ultimately, it has an impact upon them. And so the Lord defends us before them. But then finally, when we give our best to the Lord, it, it leaves behind this, this powerful legacy. Uh, in verse 9, he says, Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the, this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. <laughs> Jesus said that. Jesus said that. Uh, she would be remembered for what she did. Uh, you know, there are a lot of folks that have lived and died and, and, uh, and done some, some things in, in life that, uh, uh, that have been impressive and helpful uh, to others uh, that uh, some are remembered, but, but not very many. Uh, but this woman, this woman who gave the alabaster box of ointment uh, unto Jesus, sacrificed it for him, she has been remembered over and over and over and over again. Her, her dedication, her sacrifice has inspired countless folks down through the years as they've read the scriptures and have, have, have looked at what Jesus said about her. Uh, she, she has been used by the Lord, this example, over and over again uh, because of her sacrifice and her dedication to the Lord. And uh, one day, you and I, we're going to be remembered. Ultimately, we'll leave this world. We'll go and find our reward. We'll go to be with the Lord. And, and, and I wonder what sort of legacy are we leaving behind? What are folks going to say about us one day? I, I hope that, that we'll have the kind of legacy that, that we did what we could for the Lord. And uh, uh, we gave our best unto the Lord. And, and I'll tell you one thing. I, I'll tell you one thing about that guy. I'll tell you one thing about that woman. They gave their best to the Lord. They were an example of what a true follower of Christ was. Uh, but there's also going to be a day when, when all the works of men are going to be revealed. And uh, I, I hope that on that day uh, that we'll be noted in heaven uh, for, for being a genuine follower of Christ, being sold out and dedicated unto him, in love with Jesus, giving him our best. And uh, when we give our best to the Lord, it leaves behind a powerful legacy, certainly our testimony when we stand before the Lord, but the testimony we leave behind to those that have watched our life is a testimony that points people to Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for this account of this woman that, uh, that, that gave what she had unto the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, you have given so much unto us uh, Lord, so many blessings you've poured upon our lives. So many of them are, are spiritual in nature, but Lord, you've given uh, physically unto us as well. Uh, God, we, we tend to, uh, to fixate oftentimes on the material and physical, but uh, God, you have given abundantly in the spiritual realm, and we thank you for that. I, I do pray as your children, you'd help us to be sold out and surrendered to you. Uh, Lord, help us to give our best unto you, the very best of our time, the best of our, our abilities. Lord, help us to give the best of our resources uh, unto you. Uh, Lord, I, I pray the best of our, our, our thoughts, the, the best of our deeds, all of it, Lord, uh, would be given unto you. Lord, help us to, to yield our heart unto you. Lord, may you have our heart. And God, I, I pray that uh, we would just give you repeatedly our alabaster box of ointment. Uh, Lord, just help us to pour out our life unto you and for you. And uh, Lord, I pray you just continue to be precious in our sight. And, and Father, we're grateful uh, for the opportunity we have just to, uh, to know you and to know the Son. And, 
and uh, Lord, the privilege to live our life for him. And I, I pray we would live it well for the glory of Christ. Lord, encourage us today. And uh, there's not a thing takes place here on this earth, Lord, that you don't take note of. And, uh, and Lord, we're grateful that every sacrifice we make for you, even though others may not comprehend or understand it, Lord, it makes absolute sense unto you, and you appreciate everything we do for you. Uh, so, Father, help us to be faithful, we pray. And, Lord, we look forward to that day when we stand before you, uh, Lord, that we might hear those wonderful words, uh, that we have, we have wrought a good work on you. Uh, we have done well. Lord, we've well done when we stand in your presence. So help us to hear those glorious words, we pray. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I, I trust you're going to have a good day today. And just wanted to share that with you. And, and you just keep pushing forward for the Lord. You keep honoring him and living for him. And uh, it'll make a difference in this life. And certainly in a difference when we stand, difference when we stand before him. God bless you. You have a great day.